you know so basically as uh, mihailo mentioned about our poly uh, you know zk thesis that uh, you know and why we we feel that the announcement that we are going to do today is is very very big is that uh, there are there are you know uh, you know a few zk zk solutions out there but one of the biggest problems with zk solutions have been always about performance and the second thing is that because uh because it requires a large amount of resources for uh, you know zk provers to you know create uh, you know zk proofs uh it makes it essentially very hard to decentralize right so imagine like as mihalo was saying that you know if we had a very you know extremely fast probably world's fastest uh you know zk recursive proving technology and extremely efficient also which could run there where you could run zk proofs uh you know on a on a on a simple machine like a laptop that would be uh you know the game changer for this industry where a large number of uh you know nodes can be run in a network which can validate the transactions and things like that which will actually truly away truly make uh you know uh, us 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 uh, or truly enable us to create decentralized uh layer 2 network uh for for polygon and uh, and you know like for that uh you know i'm i'm extremely happy to announce on behalf of uh, you know our our entire team everybody is that uh, you know polygon has uh, uh, polygon is is very excited to welcome uh, you know uh, polygon uh, excited to welcome polygon 0 uh, which is uh, which will be led by uh, you know uh, a really brilliant team of uh, you know cryptographers and engineers uh primarily brandon and daniel and uh, they were previously doing it as mir protocol uh which has now uh decided to join uh, polygon and focus on zk scaling previously they were building uh like a zk uh, you know enabled chain but now they have they have decided to join polygon and build a decentralized uh zk roll up uh, on top of polygon uh you know um, so with that i will request brandon and daniel to you know take the stage and uh, you know take us through uh, but yeah for polygon community like you know we are extremely happy uh, that uh, you know this essentially now puts polygon right in the lead uh, in this entire zk scaling effort we truly believe that zk is going to be is the, is the ultimate frontier which can bring in internet level scale to blockchains and uh, you know this uh, with with me team also joining already uh, an amazing suite of uh, you know solutions on polygon this will this puts polygon in the lead uh, globally in terms of the zk solution providers so over to you uh, brandon and daniel uh hey everyone um i'm brandon i'm the uh, the one of the co-founders of mir uh you you may not have heard of us uh but hopefully uh, we can give uh in detail on what we've been working on um, and so I, I just like to say that uh, we're really, really excited uh, to be joining Polygon. Um, obviously, Polygon has had incredible success in attracting users and developers. Um, but I think what's really impressed us is their vision for the future and their commitment to uh, ZK scaling. Um, and so over the, the past few months, we've had the privilege of working with, um, with Hermes and, and with Maiden, and it's already been a really fruitful uh, collaboration, and we're really, really excited to uh, to be uh, Polygon Zero. Um, I think, I, on behalf of, of of me and Daniel, um, we're also really, really excited to be coming back to the Ethereum community. Um, Ethereum is how we both got into crypto uh, in the first place, and um, you know, it's it's a privilege to work alongside so many great teams uh, to to scale Ethereum. Um, so I'm going to give a little overview uh, of what we've been working on, and then I'm going to hand it over to to Daniel and some of our team members uh, to give a little bit, a little bit more technical detail. Um, but I'd like to open uh, with this. So in the history of computing, um, there's this thing that happens, which is when you increase computing speed by 10x, uh, you unlock radically new applications. So this has been true. Uh, across platforms. So um, for the PC, for gaming, for mobile, um, every time you, you uh, deliver processors that are 10x faster, um, the, sc the space of things that you can build and the possibilities um, increases dramatically. And so I guess from that perspective, we view uh, ZKPs as sort of a new computing platform 
And we'd like to pose a question to the Ethereum community, um, which is uh, what can you do uh, with ZKPs that are 100x faster, specifically recursive ZKPs um, that will allow us to build things like uh, more decentralized, more performant rollups, um, new ways to provide privacy to users. Um, and so we're just going to talk a little bit about, uh, about how we've done this, what we mean by recursive uh, zero-knowledge proofs, and uh, sort of go from there. So uh, recursion is, is really important um, for, uh, for, for scalable ZK rollups because, um, as we know, uh, the premise behind a, a, a ZK rollup is that we can take um, a large number of transactions that would be too expensive to verify on the Ethereum main chain, and instead we can process them off-chain and generate uh, a succinct proof that shows that all of those transactions are valid. Um, we can provide sort of the necessary state updates or, uh, you know, depending on the data availability scheme. Um, and that allows us to, to scale uh, transaction throughput while still maintaining um, the properties that we love about Ethereum, that it's decentralized and that's secure. Um, so the issue with ZK rollups right now is that it's actually really expensive to uh, to generate a proof showing that a large number of transactions are valid. Um, this is especially true for ZK rollups that support uh, general applications and uh, even more so for, for uh, ZK rollups that sort of support uh, EVM compatibility. And so what recursion allows us to do is instead of taking uh, a single proof that verifies uh, say 10,000 transactions, we can instead generate 10,000 proofs that each verify one transaction we can do all of this in parallel, and then we can recursively aggregate. Um, and so we're, we're able to generate the final proof that we post to Ethereum uh, more efficiently. So, uh, so we view sort of this breakthrough in, in recursive proof uh, generation as, as being really important for the future of, of ZK rollups on Ethereum. Um, so for some context on how we got here, um, recursive proofs have only been uh, available in practice since about 2014. Before that, they existed uh, only in academic papers. Um, so when we started MIR in 2019, uh, it took two minutes to generate a recursive proof. And so we realized very early that uh, this would never work. Like we, we, if we wanted to provide uh, high throughput and, and, and something that could scale, uh, we needed to fundamentally improve um, proof generation time for, for recursion. Um, because even if we were uh, sort of taking advantage of parallelism, uh, that only gets us so far. The, this still represents um, way too much latency for, for the performance characteristics that we'd like. So uh, in 2020s, two things happened. So um, the brilliant team at, at Aztec um, uh, developed uh, the first um, implementation of recursion on Ethereum uh, based on uh, Planck and uh, the KZG polynomial commitment scheme. Um, so proof times were about 60 seconds on a desktop. Um, and so this was a, a huge leap forward for, for rollups. Um, at the same time, we developed uh, Pl uh, Planky, which is uh, a combination of Planck and Halo. And it allowed us to achieve uh, 15 second uh, proving times, um, but the problem was is that uh, or the problem was that uh, this wasn't Ethereum compatible, so we couldn't use the, these faster provers uh, on Ethereum. And so now, I guess uh, we uh, we're really happy to announce um, Planky Two, which is a, a new proving system based on uh, Planck, Fry, and uh, some wizardry from our own team. Um, and so I think it's really important to, to sort of give credit where credit's due. Um, and we, uh, this advance is, is based uh, a lot on um, really brilliant work from, from Zach and Ariel uh, uh, at Aztec um, and who developed Plock, and then um, the extremely talented scientists at Starkware who developed Fry. Um, and so this represents a 100x speed up for recursive proofs on Ethereum. So, Planky 2 is fully transparent. There's no trusted setup, no toxic waste. Um, it's natively Ethereum compatible. So it takes uh, about a million gas to verify a Planky 2 proof. And this is uh, constant. Like we could have a recursive proof that verifies a million transactions 
it still only costs 1 million gas uh, to verify an Ethereum. And so uh, I think what we're really excited about is that uh, this is a big step forward for the space because uh, now we're measuring recursive proof generation time, not in seconds, but in milliseconds. And so um, what we uh, have achieved is um, 170 millisecond uh, recursive proof generation on a MacBook Pro. So uh, on my MacBook Air, it's a little bit slower. It's about um, 300 milliseconds. Um, but this is still a huge step forward for this space. Um, it's the fastest uh, implementation of recursive proofs ever, and uh, it works natively on Ethereum. And so actually, I think that I can show this. Um, we'll see on Zoom if it slows it down a little bit. But um, yeah, so about uh, 355 milliseconds um, right now. So yeah, we're, we're proud of that. And so all of this is sort of uh, in service to developing Polygon Zero, uh, which is the most scalable ZK EVM uh, powered by Plunky2. Um, and so we believe that ZK rollups are going to compete on speed and on cost. And uh, we believe that we're building uh, the most scalable EVM compatible uh, ZK layer two. So the goal is to allow developers to compile their existing Solidity code uh, to run uh, effectively unchanged on uh, a ZK VM. And uh, we think that this is really important um, for Ethereum and, and for the crypto space in general, because uh, our goal is to provide scalability um, without compromising on the things that make uh, Ethereum so important and so special uh, for this space. So um, we, we view this as, as sort of a route to scaling throughput uh, without uh, compromising on decentralization uh, or on security. Um, so we're really excited uh, to uh, talk a little bit more uh, about this in, in greater technical detail. And so I'm going to hand it over to uh, Daniel. Okay, thanks, Brendan. So why are we so focused on performance here? Uh, generating these proofs can be very expensive, especially if we're proving something like an EVM program, which is a really conventional design. It wasn't designed for SNARKs. So it has features like arbitrary control flow, random access, and all kinds of binary arithmetic. These aren't features that are natively supported by SNARK primitives. We can simulate them, but there's quite a bit of overhead. So on the right here, I took this benchmark from one of the old TinyRAM papers. Um, TinyRAM is this virtual machine that can be, can be, we can prove the execution of. And the authors measured basically the simulated clock rate of this VM. And as you can see, it took about 33 seconds just to prove one cycle of execution. Um, so if we compare this to a real hardware CPU, which would typically run at around 3.3 gigahertz, this is a performance gap of 11 orders of magnitude. Uh, now, to be fair, this is an older paper and we do have some modern techniques that can help to narrow this gap, but this is still a big challenge to say the least, um, especially with the EVM because uh, the, this was a 16-bit machine, whereas the EVM is fundamentally a, a 256-bit machine. So when we started this project, we wanted to collect some real data about what sort of computations we're dealing with. Uh, so we spun up an Ethereum node and we recorded a bunch of blocks and we looked at basically what's going on in terms of, how, for example, we found that the average transaction ex executes about 3,400 instructions in total, which doesn't sound like that much, but some of these instructions are relatively expensive. So for example, we have uh, the average transaction executes 88 of these AND instructions. This is a bitwise AND involving 256 bits. And on hardware, this would be pretty trivial, but in, in SNARKs, since it's not natively supported, we have to either do it bit by bit, or we can use lookup tables or other techniques, but there's still a lot of overhead either way. Um, 
the other thing that concerned us a bit here is this SHA-3 instruction. The SHA-3 is this Ketchak hash, and it involves hundreds of thousands of bit operations just to evaluate a single hash. And the average transaction does 13 of them. So uh, this might sound pretty negative so far, but it's OK. We can still make this fast. We just have to be incredibly focused on performance. So with that in mind, let's look at some of the proof schemes that we could consider using. We basically considered three options. The first is schemes based on KCG, like Planck. And KCG is this polynomial commitment scheme based on pairings. It has some nice properties. Uh, it, it, it has very small opening proofs. So a whole argument can be less than a kilobyte. Uh, it's easy to verify on Ethereum. However, the challenge here is that it's hard to do recursion with pairings. Uh, th there are a few different approaches here, but none of the results look, look really good for performance. So next we considered these schemes based on Halo. Uh, Halo is this idea that came out a couple of years ago and it provides this really clever way to do recursive proofs without pairings using elliptic curves that are not pairing friendly. Um, and we, we actually implemented this as Brendan mentioned in our library Plonky. And it, we were able to get decent prover speed and a decent recursion threshold this way. But the problem as Brendan mentioned is that Halo takes linear time to verify. So it just really isn't practical to verify on Ethereum unless we combine this with other techniques. And finally, we have schemes based on Fry, like Starks. Uh, and these are particularly interesting because there isn't really one set of performance numbers for these proofs. It really depends on the settings that we use them with. So Fry has this parameter called the blow up factor, which is basically a measure of how much redundancy we add to a polynomial before we generate the commitment to it. And if we want a really fast prover, we can use a small blow up factor, which means less redundancy. So we have less data that we were committing to and proving will be faster. However, the caveat here is that a smaller blow up factor mean, reduces the security of the Fry protocol. And we have to compensate for this by running more queries. And this increases proof size. So we have this dilemma where we can either choose a fast prover or small proofs, but we can't really have both at the same time. Uh, luckily, recursion helps us here. So with recursion, we can take a larger proof and we can shrink it by wrapping it in, in, a, in a proof, in a recursive proof with a larger blowout factor. And that's exactly what we do uh, in our ZK rollup. So we start with transaction proofs that we want to be as fast as possible. And here we use a blow up factor of two to, to really maximize the prover speed. And at first, we have these really large proofs because of that. But that doesn't really matter because we, they, they just stay on my computer. We don't send them to anybody. Instead, we immediately shrink them by wrapping them in a recursive proof with a larger blow up factor of eight. This brings the size down to about 115 kilobytes, which is more manageable. But if we're going to submit a proof to Ethereum, which charges 16 gas per byte, then we'd still like them to be smaller. So before sending a proof to Ethereum, we apply the same technique, but more aggressively with a blow up factor of 256. And this brings the size down to about 45 kilobytes, which is great. Uh, these proofs do take a bit longer to generate, but it doesn't really matter because um, we only have a small number of proofs that have to be sent to Ethereum. Okay. Uh, so the other thing we can do to really maximize the prover speed is instead of using a 256-bit field like most SNARKs do, we can encode the witness in a 64-bit field. Um, and this is much faster, especially for field multiplication, because typically quadratic algorithms are used there. So we can make it about 30, 40 times faster by using a, a smaller field. Uh, there are a couple of complications here. One is that the Fry protocol assumes a larger field of at least 100 something bits. Um, 
So here we borrowed this idea from Heath Stark, which is we encode the witness in the small field. And then when we run the FRI protocol, we run it in an extension field of this 64-bit field. Uh, and that way we, we can get the same security of having a larger field. It's just not a prime field, but that's fine. FRI doesn't require that. Uh, there are also a couple of complications with the Planck protocol, where cert in certain places, Planck assumes a larger field for security. So we could apply the same technique and run those protocols in this extension field. Uh, in some cases, we do that. But in other cases, we use another workaround, which is to keep using the small field, but we repeat some of the checks in the Planck protocol in order to boost soundness. And that's it for me. Now I'll hand it to William. OK, thanks, Daniel. So yeah, I'll, I'll talk about the recursive circuit optimizations we use in, in Planky 2. So first, a quick intro on proof recursion. Uh, the basic idea is that in a proof system, we have both a prover and a verifier. And for proof recursion, what we do is we write the verifier inside a circuit, and that allows us to verify a proof inside another proof. Okay, This sounds easy, but it, historically, it's been a really hard problem to design uh, efficient recursive proof systems. Okay? And uh, um, recently, there, there's been some research on, uh, on that, um, uh, in particular on uh, accumulation schemes uh, with Halo. But those have many drawbacks, uh, as we saw, uh, in terms of performance. Okay? And so our, our solution to this problem is to use Planck uh, with a fry based polynomial commitment. Uh, but now, if you try to write uh, naively the verifier in a circuit, you will end up with a quite a large circuit with 2 to the 16 gates, so around 60,000 gates, which is OK. But uh, the prover is a bit slow, so around 10 seconds. And so we really focused on, on bringing this number down. Um, so first, a quick recap on Planck. So in Planck, you have a, a table of field elements. And on each row of the table, you have a polynomial constraint that evaluates to 0. Okay? And each row can have um, different constraints. And so if you go and, and look at the original Planck paper, uh, you'll see that they use a table of which three, so only three columns. Okay? And, and most Planck implementations um, use between 10 and 20 columns. But we decided to, to use a, a much wider table uh, with a width of 135. And um, this may sound like a lot uh, at first, uh, but the design of our uh, system is so that it's, it's really OK. For example, we can commit to all the columns with just one Merkle root. Okay? With, with other uh, parameter commitments, you would have to commit to each column individually, uh, which would be terrible for performance. But we can just do it with one uh, Merkle root. Um, but so why do we need uh, such a wide table is uh, to design complex gates. Okay? So for example, in the Fry verifier, there's this complex operation, which is interpolation. Um, so we have eight pairs of points, uh, x0, y0, to x7, y7, and another point z. And we have to interpolate a polynomial of degree 7 on these pairs and evaluate it at z. Okay? So that's quite a complex operation that would take a lot of gates um, if we did it with a uh, classic Planck. But with our white table, we can actually do it in one gate. Okay. So how do we do so? Um, we start by uh, finding the interpolation polynomial f outside the circuit. And then we evaluate it at z uh, to get the value v. And then we put all these variables in a single row, as you can see uh, on the bottom right. And then we have a bunch of constraints on this row. Uh, the first set of constraints uh, checks that f is indeed uh, the interpolation polynomial of the pairs. And then we add a constraint to check that uh, f of z equals v. OK. Uh, another thing we can do uh, with our white table is hashing in one row. Okay? So uh, the Fry verifier uses a lot of hashes. Like currently, they make up 75% of the circuit. So it's crucial to us um, to have uh, hashing as efficient as possible inside the circuit. And uh, we decided to use Poseidon, which is an algebraic hash, so a hash designed for uh, arithmetic circuits. And it's quite a popular hash, um, and it's used by other teams in the space. 
But what's special about Planky 2 is that we can actually do one Poseidon permutation in just one row, OK? So in, in some sense, um, Planky 2 is as optimal as possible in terms of hashing. And so this is like a, a, the most common optimization we used in Planky 2 is, is exactly this. So we have a complex operation in the fire verifier. And then we use our white table to write complex gates to do uh, these operations. One, one other uh, nice optimization we use is uh, what we call Merkle caps. So the fry verifier uh, does a lot of uh, Merkle proof verifications. So on the left here, you have a classic uh, Merkle proof verification. So you start at a leaf and then you hash your node with its siblings um, until you go up to the Merkle root. And uh, you compare the hash you get with the Merkle root and accept if they are equal. Uh, but what you can do is you can save hash, hashes by uh, stopping um, at the second layer. So on the right, we stop at the second layer and we compare the hash with the second element of the second layer. Okay? And so this layer, we call it the Merkle cap. So that's a cap of height one. And uh, instead of committing to the root, we commit to this Merkle cap. Okay. Uh, you can also have a Merkle cap of height two or three, and those save uh, two or three hashes. And so this sounds like a, a small optimization, but since we do so many Merkle proof verifications uh, in the circuit, they add up to, to a nice improvement. And, and what's cool is that uh, the, this cap height is a parameter in the code uh, that we can tune to optimize either for proof speed or proof size. Yeah? And, and we have quite a few of these parameters. Um, Daniel mentioned the, the fry rate. Okay? And so we can tune these parameters um, to optimize for speed or proof size. So this makes Planck it to a, quite a versatile proving system. And all these optimizations add up to uh, a nice result that we're really proud of is that our recursive circuit is like really small at two to the 12 gates. So that's around 4,000 gates. Um, and this is one of the main reasons why we can have such, such uh, fast proving times. Um, yeah. And now I'll let Jacob talk about low level optimizations. All righty. Um, so let's talk about speed. We talked about um, high level optimizations. We talked about optimizations to the circuit. Now let's talk about how we implement the very lowest level things. I'm talking like multiplication really, really fast. How do you make math fast? It, to make math fast, you need both mathematical insight and technical expertise. An engineer can take a spec and write code that runs really, really fast on whatever hardware you're using. Um, an excellent mathematician can take uh, whatever work needs to be done and minimize the number of some fundamental operations, um, like multiplication. But you know, finite field multiplication is fundamental mathematically, not physically. There is no logic gate for finite field multiplication. So, so the mathematician only really sees a proxy. Um, on the other hand, for the engineer, the spec is immutable. Uh, there's only so far that uh, software engineering tricks can take you, and a spec can only run so fast. To make math fast, you need to flip the causation, right? The work that, you, you, that you're doing needs to be determined by um, the physical reality of the hardware that you are doing it on. Plunky 2 is built for performance, right? When we were designing the protocol, we were already thinking about how fast it would be running on commodity hardware. The earliest of decisions in Plunky 2 were already guided by performance. Um, let me give you an example. When you're doing mathematics in these kinds of proofs, you're working with a prime field FP, where P is some sort of a prime number. Uh, what's a good choice for P? That, that's a very fundamental question. Well, firstly, it needs to fit within 64 bits, like Daniel's already mentioned. And the reason why is that computers, modern computers are 64-bit machines. And once you've crossed the 64-bit boundary, everything suddenly gets so much more expensive. But it also can't be much smaller than 64 bits for security reasons. So, so you want it to be almost 64 bits, but, but not quite. And a different choices of P will also have different algorithms for 
multiplication and addition with different performance characteristics. So we want to choose P such that um, multiplication and addition, those fundamental operations are really fast. So we went through a lot of candidates. Uh, here's a GitHub thread where we documented our research. We considered many fields, each one with their own algorithms for arithmetic operations. We derived those algorithms. We examined the compiled assembly code. We counted cycles and microops. And what we ended up settling on is this really neat prime number um, that has a frankly beautiful mathematical structure that ha just happens to play really well with how modern CPUs and ISAs work. Um, let me give you another example. As Williams already mentioned, we spend a lot of time doing hashing and the hashing algorithm we use is called Poseidon. Um, within Poseidon, we use um, an MDS matrix for a particular step. And the MDS matrix is up to us to choose as long as um, it meets particular criteria. And we spend a lot of time doing matrix vector multiplication with this matrix. So, so it's important to get the matrix right to make that particular matrix multiplication fast. Um, th there's a few tricks that we use um, in order to choose a good value. So our the choice for the MDS matrix is firstly circulant. What that means is that every row is just a row above it, but shifted by one position. It means that there's fewer numbers for us to have to remember. Um, this, we're spending a lot less time just loading constants from memory, uh, which makes our code faster. Secondly, this matrix is composed of powers of two. And multiplication by powers of two is way faster on a computer because you're just shifting the bits by, by some amount, as opposed to actually having to go through all the steps of multiplication. Um, these powers are small, which makes the finalization at the end like way cheaper. And a lot of these elements are one, which is like multiplication by one is free. Like you, you just don't do anything. Um, we make extensive use of vector operations. So most of the code that your computer runs is scalar. The computer kind of takes, let's say addition. You have two numbers and um, there's an addition instruction that takes two numbers and returns the sum as one number. But your computer also has what we call vector instructions. So these do more with one instruction as long as you're doing the same thing for multiple values. So you might have a vector of four numbers and you, there's an instruction to add that to another vector of four numbers, um, getting four sums as the result in one vector. Um, compilers are generally bad at generating these kinds of instructions. So if you really want to make use of this, that's a lot of work for the program. Um, in Plunky 2, we make extensive use of vector instructions. Um, this was a lot of work for us, uh, but it, it's really worth it. So vector instructions give us a two times improvement on Poseidon. In addition to that, uh, there's a bunch of ASM scattered in the code base. So, so for example, the top one made finite field multiplication 10% faster. Uh, the bottom screenshots are from parts of our Poseidon implementations on ARM and on x86. Look, the result of all this work is lightning fast zero knowledge proofs, right? And you've seen the impressive results from Brendan, but we're only getting faster. There's still no GPUs involved, for example. Um, we didn't think that, you, that we wanted our users to need GPUs to run uh, Plunky2. Uh, and I am uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to how fast we can get in the future. The reason that we were able to do this at Polygon Zero is that we are both excellent mathematicians and also hardcore computer scientists. You know, it's not often that you get to work on something truly groundbreaking. Um, and I feel extremely lucky to have had the chance to work with such a bloody fantastic team, right? Um, I, I really can't believe that I, I get to work with my coworkers because 
just amazing. And I am really excited for what we will be able to achieve in the future. Um, and we'll have to take questions. Uh, Jacob and team, thank you so much uh, for that amazing uh, presentation and just kind of walking through all these uh, improvements. Uh, we do kind of have uh, a small caveat, which is we are running a little bit behind, so we'll have to cut the Q&A short, but there's one question yep. that came from the audience, and, and that question was just overall, kind of how do you think about now um, new applications that sort of enable uh, more things with uh, just the Polygon ecosystem and, and also the Ethereum side, and just like with these new improvements, with these new performance uh, metrics, how do you think about just the EVM world and what would now be possible here? Uh, just yep. giving that taste what you got. I think so. Kate, so probably, you know, I should take this this closure question and, uh, you know, uh, you just also want, wanted to, you know, put a closing note also that, you know, uh, how this adds an immense amount of value to the overall Ethereum ecosystem and Polygon ecosystem, uh, you know, is that um, this, this prover system, like, uh, you know, many who understand the ZK technology, they know that this is the most efficient and the fastest uh, ZK prover system. And this will enable us to create a very high uh, performant, highly decentralized uh, ZK, uh, ZK rollup uh, or EVM compatible ZK rollup, which will, you can already imagine that if these, uh, you know, this will provide full security by Ethereum. And then, you know, imagine uh, you have a ZK rollup where it provides Ethereum, uh, you know, full security by Ethereum and dApps can use that rollup at a much, uh, you know, uh, low cost transactions by using Validium kind of systems or, you know, later on with E2.0 data shards. It, it has a potential to provide uh, massive scalability to uh, you know, the, to the dApp ecosystem and Polygon already has a like, huge dApp ecosystem. Uh, which, which is, you know, we, we keep getting these demands that, you know, we need to have more, uh, you know, Ethereum secured, uh, you know, and decentralized layer two. And I think this will, this, this takes Polygon community very close to that, that dream. And then what, what uh, Brandon and team and, uh, and Daniel and team are building is, you know, would also provide like, this is like a bit technical uh, getting into it, but, would, you know, might also provide an, a virtual machine, which has more opcodes. Uh, to use to the developers, uh, you know, relevant to the question, uh, you know, that uh, you can, like the apps on this, uh, you know, layer two can actually run more uh, op codes, like that means more functionality, more features uh, on this one while still be fully provable, uh, you know, on, on Ethereum. So this is really, really massive for Polygon. And, uh, you know, with that closing note, I, you know, want to congratulate the entire Polygon community that, uh, you know, uh, this this uh, establishes Polygon at uh, one of the topmost players in the zk space, and and you know let's let's uh, build a highly adopted uh, Ethereum layer two and bring the you know mass adoption to Ethereum. Thanks a lot, Karthik. Over to you. Thanks everybody, and uh, congrats again to the Polygon Zero team.